Assalamu alaikum children. Today we are starting chapter 11. We are going to learn about density. Have you observed logs floating on water? And have you seen rocks sinking into the bottom of water? Have you observed that balloons filled with helium will float away up into the atmosphere while balloons filled with oxygen will stay closer to the ground and sink? Have you observed when you mix oil into water, it will separate into two layers and oil will float on top of water? Well, one of the reasons for this is because oil and water do not mix, they are immiscible. So when you add oil into water, eventually it will separate into two layers and oil will always float on top of water. You will never observe water floating on top of oil. Well, the reason for all of these occurrences is a property called density. Density is a physical property, which means a property which can be quantitatively measured. If you observe the different kinds of objects around you, they have two things in common, mass and volume. Mass is the measure of amount of matter in an object. Greater the mass, greater the amount of matter. And volume is a measure of the space occupied by an object. Now let's look at the units of measuring mass and volume. The units of measuring mass are grams and kilograms and the standard industrial unit of measuring mass is kilograms. The units of measuring volume are cubic centimeters and cubic meters. And the standard international unit of measuring volume is cubic meters. Now let's look at figure 11.1. There are three pictures, a glass of water, a picture of a well, and a picture of a reservoir. And if you look at the volumes of water in each of these, it is different. If you take the volume of water found in glass, it's quite small, whereas the volume of water found in the reservoir, it's quite large. When there's a large volume of water, the mass of it is also large. Therefore, the mass of water in the reservoir is quite larger than the mass of water in the glass. So you will understand that different substances will have different volumes and different masses. Okay, children, now let's do an activity to find the relationship between mass and volume. Activity 11.1. In order to do this activity, we need measuring cylinders of different capacities. We need a measuring cylinder of 100 milliliters capacity, 250 milliliter capacity, and 500 milliliter capacity. And we need a 500 milliliters beaker a triple beam balance, which is an instrument that is used to measure the mass precisely, and water. So, step of this experiment is to adjust the triple beam balance to its zero mark before we do any measurement. The second step is to measure the mass of the cleaned and dried 500 milliliter beaker using this balance. Once we measure the mass of this empty beaker, we fill it up with water. First, we measure 100 milliliters of water from a measuring cylinder and then fill, it, fill the beaker with water and measure the mass of the beaker with water. And then we measure the mass of 250 milliliters and 500 milliliters of water separately using the same beaker. And finally, we record all our readings in order to do some calculations. In this activity, we measure the volume of water by milliliters. So you need to understand the relationship between milliliters and cubic centimeters because we will be recording our readings in cubic centimeters. One milliliter equals to one cubic centimeter. Therefore, the readings uh, of volumes of water that we got in milliliters has to be recorded in cubic centimeters. Right, now the very first step 
of recording our readings is to record the mass of the empty beaker. The mass of the empty beaker is 250 grams. Let's record. Right. Now we need to tabulate our readings. We need to uh, form a table. The first column is uh, volume of water. Mass. The second column is mass of beaker with water. And then the third column is mass of water. And the final column is the ratio between mass of water and volume. Right. Now first, let's record the volume of water and the mass of beakers with water. Once the readings are recorded, we need to find the mass of water for each volume of water. You can see the readings are recorded in the table. Uh, the mass of beaker with uh, 100 milliliters of water or 100 cubic centimeters of water is 350 grams. The mass of beaker with 250 cubic centimeters of water is 500 grams. And the mass of beaker with 500 cubic centimeters of water was measured as 750 grams, right? Now from these readings, we need to find the mass of water. Now let's do the calculations to find the mass of water for each volume of water. In order to calculate the mass of water for each volume of water, you need to subtract the mass of empty beaker from the mass of beaker with water. Now, let me do an example for you. Now, the mass of the empty beaker is 250 grams. Mass of the beaker with 100 milliliters of water is 350 grams. So when we subtract 250 grams from 350 grams, we end up with 100 grams, which is the mass of water of volume 100 milliliters. So the mass of water of 100 cubic centimeters is 100 grams. We have to do these calculations to these two volumes as well. And then we need to fill up the table. Once the calculations are done, these are the results we obtain. The mass of 100 cubic centimeters of water is 100 grams. The mass of 250 cubic centimeters of water is 250 grams. And mass of 500 cubic centimeters of water is 500 grams. Now, we need to fill the final column of the table. We need to find the ratio between mass of water and volume of water. 100 grams divided by 100 cubic centimeters. And the result is one. Here, 
Here are the final results of the calculation. So you can see in all three instances, the ratio between mass of water and volume is one, and the unit is grams per cubic centimeter. Since we measured the mass in grams and the volume in cubic centimeters, when we divide mass by volume, we end up with the unit grams per cubic centimeter. So it must be clear to you from this activity that the mass of water, the ratio between mass of water to its vol volume is a constant. Although we take different values for the volume of water, at the end, when we get the ratios between mass of water and volume, the ratio is always a constant. And this constant value is specific for water. And this is known as the density. Now let's look at the equation of density. Therefore, density equals to mass divided by volume. The definition of density is that the mass or mass per unit volume of a substance is known as the density of that substance. So density is a specific property of each substance. The density is symbolized by rho, which is a Greek uh, symbol. Mass is symbolized by symbol m. Volume is symbolized by symbol v. And therefore, the formula for density can be written as rho equals to m divided by v. Now we move on to the units of density. According to the measurements taken in activity 11.1, .1, units of density can be deduced as follows. The mass was measured in grams, volume was measured in cubic centimeters, therefore, density, the unit of density is grams per cubic centimeter. But according to standard international units, mass is measured in kilograms and volume is measured in cubic meters. Therefore, the standard unit for density is kilograms per cubic meter. On the other hand, density is the ratio between mass and volume. It is a property of materials, since each material has its own specific density. Therefore, different objects made of the same material always have the same density, regardless of their mass and volume.